Hey guys, welcome back to Small Engines Questions and Answers number 101. And as you guys know, I took a month off. It was a nice break, but I was really busy in the shop. So it didn't really seem like a break from work, but it was a break from the Q&A. But anyways, I'm glad to be back. And today I've got some information for you guys again. And also another note is I'm going to make the Q&A bi-weekly from now on. So it's going to be every second Friday. It'll make it more manageable for me that way because I have a lot to do in the house. As you guys know, my wife is ill and I have to look after her as well. Plus everything I do in the shop here. So it's just going to make it more manageable for me. And it's not going to put as much pressure on me to get that out every single Friday. But if things change in the future and I do have more time, then I'll make it back every week. But for now, it's going to be every second Friday. Just to give you an idea, it takes hours to make one q &A video. I first have to tape it, then I take it in the house, put it on my good computer in there, and I spend another two to three hours minimum just editing the video. So there's a lot involved, and with the time limit, it just puts a little bit more pressure. So by having it every two weeks, it's gonna relieve that pressure a bit. Then I'll enjoy doing it more, and I can concentrate more on what's best for you guys to see out there. And I also want to thank all you guys who wish me a happy holiday from the Q&A. Now the first question today is some people ask me, what does it mean when the oil is leaking from the transmission of my self-propelled Honda lawnmower? Well, it's not good news, but it means that there's a major problem with the transmission of your lawnmower. And I'm specifically talking about the Honda HRX 217 lawnmowers. And here's one like I'm talking about, this exact same lawnmower. This one had that problem, the oil leaked out of the tranny, and now it's done. You can't even service the transmission, they will not even sell you parts for it. You have to replace the complete unit, which is really expensive. At that point, you might as well just buy another lawnmower. Now the transmission for this mower is on the back because it is rear wheel drive. And it's unfortunate that this has been happening, but I have a customer that he's had two to three lawnmowers do this with only about two years worth of use. Now he's using it commercially but for the price you pay for these over a thousand dollars here in Canada you would expect a bit more usage out of the lawnmower. So hopefully that will cease to be a problem soon. Now there's a guy on YouTube his name's Jeremy but his YouTube name is Backwoods Country Boy. He also goes by Mower Medic One. It's all the same channel. Now he's got some good news for you guys who own these lawnmowers and live in the US. Apparently there's a bulletin number 93 that will cover the repair of your transmission even if you're out of warranty for a while. What I'll do is I'll put a link to his video underneath this video here and I highly recommend that you go and subscribe to his channel. And he's a really nice guy, I'm sure you're gonna like him. So go check his channel. I'm gonna put the link to his channel as well under this uh, video here today and you can check out both the video and his channel and make sure to subscribe to him. Now another question I get in regards to these lawnmowers or just lawnmowers with a Honda engine is do you have to screw in the dipstick all the way in to check the oil level? Well the answer to that is no and I'm going to show you on that same lawnmower again why. Here's the mower if you look at this little emblem here on the engine you can see that it shows that the dipstick is not screwed in when checking the oil level. And here's the dipstick I'm going to take it out. So when checking the oil in your lawnmower with the Honda engine, first make sure it's on nice level ground. And all you have to do is insert the dipstick like this. Do not screw it in. Pull out and check the oil level. And you want the oil level to be in the serrated part there. You don't want it to go above or to be below. And when you're all done checking the oil, that's when you screw it in. And that's it. And on lawnmowers with a Briggs & Stratton engine, you want to make sure that the dipstick is screwed in all the way when you check the oil, unlike the Honda engines. Now if you've got a lawnmower with a Honda clone engine, you may want to check the oil level the same way as you would on a Honda engine. Well, another question I get asked a lot in the summertime is what kind of oil should I use in my lawnmower? Well, first of all, use the oil that the manufacturer recommends. Some recommend a 10W30 and some recommend an SAE30. Those are pretty well the only two oils that I use in lawnmowers all summer long. Another question I got from a YouTuber the other day, when I'm working on a carburetor and I blow through the connector for the fuel line, should air pass through when the float is down or when the float is up? Well, the answer to that is air or fuel should only pass through when the float is down. The reason for that is when the float is down, 
It also brings down the needle valve with it, allowing the fuel to go through when the engine is in use. And here's a carburetor here from a generator. I took it apart to show you. I did put a fuel line on the fuel connector over here so I can blow in it just to show you. Now when the floats down like this, you're going to hear the air go through. And when it's up, you're not going to hear any air go through. So I'll just do this now and quickly show you. Now you can hear the air. Now you can't hear the air when the float is up. And that's the way it should be. If you do hear air pass through when the float is up, then you should replace the needle valve inside here. It's just a small needle that's connected to the float. This can often be the cause of flooding engines when the needle valve isn't stopping the flow of fuel when the float's up. So hopefully this answered your question. Now another question I get asked often here in my shop and also from YouTubers is what kind of grass trimmer do you recommend? Well the grass trimmers I recommend the most are those made by steel. The parts are easily available, they do come in quickly when you order them which is good from a mechanic standpoint and I find they're well built, they always start, they run good and I also like the way the heads are made on them for trimming the grass and I've never had any people complain about them. Another reason why I recommend them is because where I live here in Canada there's a lot of steel dealers so it's easy for people to find a dealer if they need a part or to look at the selection of trimmers they have. And right now in Canada there's one on sale for $149.99 I believe it's the FS38 it's a good machine it's pretty well the base model that they have but if you have some more serious grass cutting to do you can buy a bigger model. And also something else I've noticed is some YouTubers feel that their question sometimes can be a dumb question. So I want to take this time right now to tell you guys that no question is a dumb question. Just send me all your questions no matter if you feel embarrassed about them or not. I may not always have time to respond to your questions because I'm very busy, but it's in no way because I ever thought it was a dumb question. So don't ever feel afraid to ask a question by posting a comment under my videos. And before I end off today I'm just going to show you a lawn tractor that I'm working on. It's got a 17 horsepower Intec single cylinder overhead valve engine. As you can see the motor's apart, the head's off. And here's the head in my hands and the seat had to actually come out of the exhaust valve so I had to pin it back in using a center punch. Now this is a method that is often used by mechanics in order to save the head but it's not always guaranteed that it will never come out again. It's cheaper than buying a whole new head and I usually give my customers the option of buying a new head or just doing this method to try to get it going again. And I'm also trying to film this whole operation so that you guys can see it sometime in the future. So thanks for watching guys, it's nice to be back. Have a great weekend and we'll see you in two weeks.